to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim the news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. It's evident from Ephesians 5, verse number 25, that Jesus loved the church deeply. The Bible tells Christians or husbands, love your wives as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Today we're going to think about the love that each person ought to have for the Lord's church, what makes that love so strong, and how do we show that love for the church in each one of our lives. And so we hope that you got your Bible and that you'll be ready to study the scriptures with us on this wonderful subject. Welcome to the Gospel of Christ program. My name is Ben Bailey, and we're so glad that you've joined us for our broadcast today. Today's lessons are being brought to you by members of the Church of Christ worldwide. Those members of the Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their worship assembly. If you've got a Bible question or there's something you'd like to study, they'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God together with you. Also, at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your study of the Word of God. You can log on to our website, thegospelofchrist.com, and all our Bible study material is free of charge and available to you. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson, whether on DVD or CD, we'd love to send that to you. You can fill out a media request form from our website, or you can call us toll-free at one 855 458-3905. On our website, we have a host of Bible study material, including transcripts, study question, question and answers, and a variety of study materials that would help you in your study of the Word of God. Friend, at the Gospel of Christ, we're concerned about the salvation of souls. That's our main emphasis. We're not concerned about your wallet. We're not concerned about hidden agendas. We just simply want to help men and women know the Word of God and to go to heaven. And so as we transition to our study today, we hope that you'll get your Bible out and have it handy as we're going to look to the Word of God together. What exactly does it mean? to love the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, and why do we love the church? As we think today about the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and every Christian having that love for the church, let's realize that Jesus Himself loved the church deeply. Acts 20, verse 28, the Bible says, Jesus purchased the church with His own blood. How much? Did Christ love the church enough that He gave His life and gave up His life on Calvary to buy the church and to save the Lord's church? And in view of that, and as we think about the great love that Christ has for the church, we ask a, a very practical question today. Why should Christians today love the church of the Lord Jesus Christ? You know, sometimes we hear people talk about the church and it's not talked about in a very good light. Uh, you know, it's as though they have to go to church or as though they have to work in the church or, or as though the church is really not that important. And the Bible teaches that the church is important and that every Christian ought to love the church of the Lord Jesus Christ deeply. Now, let's notice why. First and foremost, we ought to love the church because the church belongs to Christ and to Him only. He is the sole owner of His church. And if we're a member of the church, that means we belong to Christ with all the blessings and privileges that go along with that. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 11. The Scripture says this, No other foundation can any man lay except that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. He's the foundation of the church. Jesus said, I will build my church. And so it belongs to the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and Him only. 
Friend, it doesn't carry a denominational name. The Bible teaches that's contrary to the will of God. We're not a part. If we're a member of the Lord's Church, we're not a part of some denomination. We're a part of the one body of Jesus Christ. Paul addressed the subject of denominationalism in 1 Corinthians 1, verses 10 through 13, when he said, It's been reported concerning you, my brethren, by those of close household, that there are contentions among you. He says, Each of you says, I'm a Paul, or I'm a Paulus, or I'm of Cephas, or I'm of Christ. Paul said, Let there be no divisions among you. Why do we love the church? Because it is the divine institution, divine organism that Jesus Christ built and that it belongs to Him and Him only. If we're a part of that church, then friend, that means we belong to Christ. And to belong to Christ comes with all the privileges and blessings that go along with that. We have access to God the Father in prayer. Matthew 6 verse 9. We have forgiveness. Acts 2 verse 38. We have the, the privilege of being a family of God. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 16. And ultimately, if we're a member of Christ's church and we belong to Him, then one day He's going to come to receive His own. And take us back to the Father. 1 Corinthians 15, verse number 24. Secondly, as we think about why Christians should love the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we ought to love the church because Jesus paid the best sacrifice and the greatest sacrifice ever to establish her. Listen again to the words of Paul in Acts 20, verse 28. Paul is talking to the elders at Ephesus. And to these men who are leaders in the congregation there, the elders, Paul says, shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. Christ purchased the church with his powerful blood. When Jesus was, you think about this, when Jesus went through the agony and suffering that he faced, when people mocked him, when they laughed at him, when they spit in the face of Jesus, when they placed that crown of thorns on his head and, and took that rod and beat him on the head, when Jesus was taken and beaten with that whip, why did he do all that? To purchase the church. To buy back to God the saved who would obey his gospel. Friend, does that not stress to each one of us how important the church is? is to God. If the church is made up of the saved, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 27, then that expresses how important we are to God. God wants all men to be saved. 1 Timothy 2, 4. God's not slow concerning His promises, as some men count slowness, but He's long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. If Christ purchased the church with His own blood, and if the blood of Christ means anything to us, and friend, the church is going to be very important to every person who loves God and the great sacrifice He made. Thirdly, we love the church of the Lord Jesus Christ because it is the place of the saved. Now you think about this. Imagine that you know, there's some kind of uh, catastrophe coming. Imagine there's some kind of destruction that is headed our way. Imagine it this way. Let's say that you're out in the yard and you hear a tornado siren. And that tornado siren gives the warning that a tornado, a destructive force, is headed right towards you. And you've got a basement or you've got a cellar that you can get into. Aren't you glad you've got that place? That place, You shut the door, the tornado comes over, and you're not damaged at all. Aren't you thankful for that place of safety where the saved at that time are? Well, friend, think about it this way. There is a day of destruction coming. God is going to give a reckoning of all men when He comes. 2 Thessalonians 1, verses 7 through 10. And the Bible teaches that the church is the place of safety where all the saved of God's kingdom are. How do we know that? Because of the teaching of Acts 2, verse 47. Remember, they have now heard the message for the first time about Jesus. They believe He's now the Messiah who they formerly killed. They're ready to repent and be baptized for the remission of their sins. Acts 2 verse 38. The Bible tells us those who gladly received His word were baptized. And watch this. In Acts 2 verse 47. And the Lord added to the church daily those who are being saved. Where are the saved put in the church? 
the place of safety, God's collection where all the saved are. And not only do we have the privilege right now of being saved and being a member of the Lord's church, but ultimately it is the church that's going to be saved. Ultimately, we're going home one day to be with God. Do you remember the words of Jesus in John 14, 1? Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, were it not so? He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come and again receive you to myself. And when we think about the beauty of heaven and what that's going to mean, friend, those who are in the church are going there. Why do we love the church? It's the place of safety and it's the place where all of God's saved are. There aren't any saved outside the church. It is that place where God, not men, put the saved when they obey the gospel. We also love the church of the Lord Jesus Christ because the church has the power to overcome sin, Satan, and hell. I want you to listen to the words of Jesus in Matthew 16 as he spoke about his church. Peter had just made the statement, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. And I want you to notice what Jesus says based on that. Jesus said, and I also say to you, that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Christ's church, His plan of salvation, His sacrifice has the power to defeat Satan. Hebrews 2 verse 14, Jesus through death overcame Him who had the power of death. It has the power to overcome destruction and eternal torment if we obey the gospel. Listen to Romans 8 1. There is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. And so it has the power to overcome Satan, to overcome the forces of hell, and to overcome sin. If we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ, cleanses us from all sin. Why do we love the church? Friend, nobody wants to be lost. Nobody wants to go to hell. Nobody wants to be overcome by Satan and sin and live a, a life that is so wrapped up and entangled in that. That's not what man wants. We want to be saved. We want to overcome the evil forces of the world. We want peace and happiness and prosperity spiritually. Friend, that occurs through the words of Jesus when He said, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hell's not going to conquer the church. The Hadean realm is not going to conquer the church. The devil cannot conquer the church. If we remain faithful in the Lord's church, we are on God's side and ultimately we will be the victors or those who conquer. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 57 says this, Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Friend, we also love the church that our Lord Jesus died for because the church is God's people. God's people love His church because we are the Lord's church. Not loving the church is not loving yourself or other Christians. And so if I love other Christians and I love myself and want to go to heaven, then I naturally must love the church. Think about the words of Paul in 1 Corinthians 12, verse number 27. Paul said to Christians in Corinth, You, talking to Christians, are the body of Christ and members individually one of another. Now, what is the body? Well, the body is the church. Ephesians 1, verse 22 and 23 Christ is head over the body, His church, which is His body. And so the church is the body. Those are used as synonyms in the New Testament. We, you, are the body of Christ and members individually, one of another. We love the church because it's, you know, when we think about the church, please understand, we're not talking about the building. The church is not a geographic location. It's not a building. The church is Christians. It's the people. God does not dwell in temples made with hands today. Acts 7, verses 48 through 50. God dwells among His people. And we are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so when we say we love the church, we love each other. We love the benefits that come by being a member of the church. And we love the head of that church, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, this is so practical because if I love my brothers and sisters naturally, it's going to be the church as well. They are the church. Hebrews 13.1 teaches, Let brotherly love continue. 
I am commanded by Christ, love one another. John 13, verses 34 and 35, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another. God wants His people to be filled with love for each other, to care about one another, to look out for each other's interest, and to encourage and help each other to go to heaven in every way. And so if someone says, you know, give me Christ but not the church, wait a minute. The church is made up of the saved. The church is made up of our brothers and sisters in Christ. If I don't love the church, do I love my brothers and sisters in Christ? If not, then I stand condemned according to the words of 1 John chapter 3 and chapter 4. We must love one another and strive to encourage and to help one another. And then we mention another point as to why Christians love the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We love the church because the church's eternal destiny is heaven itself. We've alluded to this passage several times, but I want you to look with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and I want you to notice what happens in verse number 24. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Look with me in verse number 24 at the words of Paul as it relates to the resurrection. Paul says, Then comes the end, finality of all things, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule, all authority, and all power. Now from this verse, we're talking about final coming of Christ, second coming, the end of all things, destruction of the world. And he says, when then comes the end. And at the end, Christ is going to deliver, take back the kingdom to the Father. Now, we ask the question, what is the kingdom? Well, Jesus promised it would exist during the lifetime of his disciples, right? Mark 9, verse 1, Jesus said, Assuredly, I say to you, there are some standing here today who will not taste death until they see the kingdom present with power. And so some of his first century disciples were promised to see it. Colossians 1 verse 13 tells that it did come into existence. The Bible says that God translated some out of darkness into the kingdom of his son. And so it came into existence in the first century. What is the kingdom? Well, the words of Christ in establishing the church Again, help us to understand what it is. Jesus said, and I say to you, that you are Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church. And then he said this, and I'm going to give to you the keys of the kingdom. What's the kingdom? It's the church. The church and the kingdom are synonymous. We're talking about one and the same. Peter stood up with the eleven, preached the gospel, took those keys of the gospel, opened the doors of the kingdom, and the Bible says for the first time the Lord added to the church daily. Those are being saved. Now, if the church is the kingdom, then friend, we love the church because its eternal destiny is heaven itself. Think about this. When Christ comes to claim His own, when He comes to take back with Him to His Father's house, those who obey the gospel, it's going to be those in the kingdom. He'll deliver the kingdom. To the Father. The kingdom and the church are the people, then we're going to be delivered ultimately to God Himself. And that's the power, that's the joy, and that's the hope of being a Christian. I love the church because if I remain faithful unto death, Revelation 2, verse 10, I can have the crown of life because the church is going to be with God for all eternity. Now, friend, let's then shift gears and let's think about this for just a moment. If we say we love the church, and hopefully we do after thinking about these principles, then the next logical question is, how do we show our love for the Lord's church? And friend, we do that by the following ways. Number one, I show my love and you show your love for the Lord's church by putting it first. Now remember, the church and the kingdom are one and the same. What did Jesus say about our priority in the kingdom? Jesus said in Matthew 6, 33, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Friend, the church needs to be our first priority. Now, let's make that practical. More than worldly interest and pleasures, more than the job, more than money, more than recreation and ball games and all those things, the church needs to come first. At all decisions I make, I want to think about the church first and foremost. And the question ought never to come, 
Are we going to go to worship today? Are we going to work in the church? Are we going to evangelize today? Are we going to help spread the borders of the kingdom? No, the church is number one priority. That's how I show. And then everything else can fall in line after that. And that's how I show my love for the Lord and His church. Secondly, if I love the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, then I'm going to want to spread the borders of the kingdom and tell others about it. That was one of the requests that Jesus left with us. After His resurrection, Jesus would say in Matthew 28, verse 18 and 19, and Mark 16, verse 15, Go into all the world, preach the gospel unto every creature. We're to baptize of all nations, Matthew 28, verse 18. And the, the, the early church did that. In Acts 8, verse 4, the Bible says those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. And thus, as a Christian, I want to be ready always to tell about Christ. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 15. And so, if we love the church, listen carefully now, we're not going to be ashamed of the church. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, Paul said. Romans 1, 16. If I love the church, then I want my neighbors to be saved and become a part of the church, right? And so, spreading the gospel is one of the ways that we show our love for the Lord's church. The Lord's church, the Lord doesn't have any silent partners. In His church, we need to be spreading the gospel and telling others about the message of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And then, friend, as we've already noted, we show our love for the church by really loving one another. Hebrews 13, 1, let brotherly love continue. If I love you and you love me, then we're going to strive to encourage one another. We're going to strive when somebody's down or hurting or in need. We're going to strive to help them. We're going to do what we can to encourage and, and lift one another up and be built up together so that we really can live as a family of God together for all eternity. Friend, we also show our love to the church that Jesus died for by giving ourselves to the church. Now, when we talk about giving, we're not just talking about financially. Don't get me wrong. The Bible teaches Christians are to give as they've prospered on the first day of the week. 1 Corinthians 16, verses 1 and 2. But giving myself to the church requires more than just finances. I'm going to give my time to the work of the church. I'm going to give my energy and effort in serving the Lord. I want to give myself in growing to be a better steward and servant in what God wants me to do. And I want to give financially as well to the work of the local church on the first day of the week as God has commanded each one of us. But then we also can show our love for the Lord's church by not just filling a pew on Sunday or Wednesday, but by actually doing something for the Lord. Working in the kingdom is how we show our love for the church. You know, when you think about the idea of being a servant, that's what Jesus has called us to do. Mark 10, verse 45, Jesus said, For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give His life a ransom for many. When you look at the life of Jesus, as we talk about working in the church and Him being our example, when you look at the life of Jesus, Jesus lived the most servant-filled life you could ever imagine. Think about all that He was doing. He went out and helped the poor, uh, fed the poor. He went out and helped those who were hurting. He healed those who were sick. He cast demons out of those who were possessed. If anybody ever exemplified working in the kingdom, it was the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And friend, that's the application for me and you. If I'm going to really love the church, then I've got to not just fill a pew and listen to someone speak a lesson or a Bible class. I've got to be out being busy and working for God. Jesus said in John 9 verse 4, We must work the works of Him who sent us while it is day. For night comes when no man works. Now's the time and now's the opportunity to be working for God. We need to stay busy in His kingdom. The Apostle Paul said it this way. In 1 Corinthians 15 verse 58, Paul said, Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. What we do for God now, that's what's really important, and that is that which is not vain, but brings glory and honor to God. 
And do you remember the words of Revelation 14, verse 13? The Bible tells Christians, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Now, friend, as we talk about loving the church by not just sitting there and you know taking up space, here's what that means. It means that I want to tell somebody else about the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't want to be the Lord's silent partner, but we want to go out and evangelize. We want to tell others about the good that is done in the church and how they can be saved. We want to do good in our communities. That's what, you know, that's what Jesus really did while He was here. He went about doing good. He's done all things well, they said of Him in Mark 7, verse 37. How can I help those who are hurting? How can I help the poor who are in need? What can we do to those who are sick? How can we help those who have got spiritual problems or in need of God? Those are the things that Jesus strove to do while He was here. And those are the things that we need to do <clears throat> as well while we're here. We study our Bible. We want to pray. We want to do what we can to give ourselves to God. And we want to make sure that every day we strive to be a living sacrifice for the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, friend, as we think about loving the church, another important question is needed to be asked. And it's this. Are you a member of the church Jesus died for? Have you obeyed the gospel of Christ? Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Jesus said, unless you believe that I am He, you'll surely die in your sins. John chapter 8, verse number 24. Are you willing to repent of those things in your life that may not be right? Jesus said in Luke 13, 3, unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Are you willing to confess and acknowledge Jesus as the Savior with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation? Matthew 10, verse 32 and 33, and would you do what the Bible says to get in the church? By one Spirit, we're all baptized into one church. Friend, if you're not a member, we're begging you today. Become a member of the Lord's church and live every day to show that you love the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wife. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll-free at 1-855-458-3905 or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111. This is the Gospel of Christ.